starting to my immediate left, uh, since we have the distinction of having these bass players who turned into fabulous producers, is there a link between having anchored a rhythm section and understanding what it is that makes a record work? Is there a natural transition from the bandstand to behind the control board in your case? Or what's the relationship, do you think? Yeah, I think that, that uh, in a rhythm section, the bass is kind of the fulcrum. I mean, that's how I think of it, anyhow. And that, that y you, you have a lot of control in a certain way over, over things sitting in that position. And, uh, and that it, it's a good position to sort of develop a intuitive sense of, of musical architecture uh, by being in and, and working in a lot with a, with a small group or a, a larger ensemble because you sort of, the, the whole thing kind of hinges in a certain point there. And I think that, that uh, the more experience that you have in trying things architecturally uh, with ensembles, the more you develop a uh, set of preferences for for design in what you you know what you want to do musically, um, and that's that's sort of the the groundwork that that uh, that you utilize uh, when you start producing records is is really having a specific set of opinions and and um, preferences as far as how things should be be built and and how uh, the architecture of a track should move and the, the thick and thin of it all and, and uh, arrangement sense. So, so, so I think, I think that in a way, I was, I was thinking about that before this, I think that, that perhaps that sets you up uh, uh, in a good way to have the desire to produce records um, sitting in that chair. Not, not that you can't get that in other uh, roles in an ensemble, but but certainly the bass is a good one to uh, to develop uh, your own uh, sense of design in. And the fact that uh, you and Marcus as well have had a lot of experience in the jazz world, where the bass can have more of an independence than on a pop record, um, starting with bass players who started to. I guess take more of a role uh, from Mingus to Scott LaFaro. Marcus, would you say that in a way um, producing pop records uh, is a different mindset than uh, your role playing in a jazz well, group? Well, playing bass on pop records, the, the mindset's a little different, you know? But in terms of just making music or producing music, it's all the same, you know? You're just trying to make it sound good, you know? And there's a, there's a specific kind of emphasis when you're doing jazz and there's another emphasis when you're doing pop but it's all really the same thing it's just trying to make it sound good and the best jazz records have a lot in common at least as far as i can tell they got a lot in common with the best pop records how would you say that is what, what elements or? uh well you uh it's very uh, there's a clarity that's uh in all good music you know if you're listening to like a a miles davis record or frank sinatra record or a prince record there's always a, a uncluttered feeling and every instrument like in terms of the arrangement has its focus and its function and there's no duplicates you know a lot of producers who aren't that experienced they can't figure out what needs to do a certain job so they have three things to do it you know what I mean sometimes that works like in Motown they used to do that they used to have like three guitar players and two mm -hmm. drummers but lots of times it just ends up being unfocused you know and I think that uh, the best music has a clarity the message gets across really clearly and um, and it hits you right right in, in your soul and I think that's that's the, true with all good music can I add something please uh, just before we came out here um, we were talking about Marcus going on tour with Herbie Hancock and Wayne Shorter and how traditionally like going back to Ron Carter it was the bass player who held down who was really on the ground holding the kites while, while everyone else was out flying in the lightning and the wind. And I think it takes a certain personality type. It's not like bass players don't want to play more notes. 
<laughs> but who, who's going to assume the responsibility of respecting the song, respecting the time, and respecting the artists who are floating out there? And I think tho those personality qualities are really instrumental to being a, a good producer, whether in jazz or pop. When I think of Marcus, if you think of the, the one of my favorite bass parts ever on a record is uh, Never Too Much, Luther Vandross <laughs> song, right? Because it not only sparkles, and it, it's so creative and, and such an inventive line, but it totally s holds up the song. It, it's, it's, it gives Luther this cushion to sing off of, and it, 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 it holds the groove down, and it, and it defines the, the chords of the song, but it, it still sparkles. And you could almost listen to that bass part and know that he would be a great producer because he is, is played with humility and total awareness and respect for the artist in the song. Mm. Humility. Wow. Yeah. Mm. That's, that's it right there. That's, that's right. it right there, the really. Most that's the word. Part of it. Because everybody here, uh, we've all been in the situation where we're in a band and the guitar player is flying and the drummer's flying and we're going, I can fly. <laughs> <laughs> But, but, but we're going, but somebody's got to hold this thing together. Somebody's yeah. got to stay home. Somebody's got to stay home. <laughs> somebody's got to stay home.